You know when you have an interaction with someone and it goes extremely smoothly, like they come towards you, they reach their hand out, you know, you clap hands and you, you like dap each other up and shit. And it goes extremely smoothly and it feels fucking great. The conversation flows, right? These kind of things our narrative ignores and my narrative ignored it for so long. And what do I mean by that? I'm just saying, right? I had this narrative that I was always this awkward guy that couldn't communicate with people effectively, that would always make things feel weird. And on the odd occasion that things went like swimmingly and nothing wrong with it, I still had this doubt in the back of my mind, like, wow, that was just pure fluke or wow, that was this, that was that. No, I'm just not an awkward person, right? This narrative is dictating the majority of my interactions. Say for example, someone comes up to me and they go like this. And I'm telling them myself, I'm an awkward person. I've got this mindset around this identity. They come towards me, they reach out their hand, and I go for a fucking fist bump or some random shit like that. Or I accidentally interrupt them. They start speaking and I'm like, they get, they say, hi, how are you? And midway in them saying that, I say, yo, what's going on, man? Like without picking up on social cues, ignoring things. Because I'm so stuck in my head because of this narrative that I'm this awkward guy. You've got to realise that these things you tell yourself are a direct reflection of your actions. And this goes way more than just social interactions and social skills. This goes into, say for example, say for example going to the gym. If you have this narrative that you really struggle going to the gym and being consistent, and you're obviously gonna be inconsistent. You're obviously not gonna stick to the habit. It is your choice and only your choice to decide to overcome this narrative. And just using your thoughts and saying, I'm awkward around people and changing that consciously to something like, I'm always confident around people. That's a good, that's a step forward, but it goes deeper than that. Because there are some re- there's some reason, some belief for you believing that you're an awkward person. For me, it's, or it was more like, it was the fact that, you know, I had past experiences when I'm awkward. And it normally comes down to past experiences, especially in childhood. They seem to dictate the majority of these things. I have this narrative that had this narrative that my social skills, my lack of social skills and my awkwardness was because of, I was naturally an introvert. I was, you know, the younger sibling and my older sibling always did the talking, always did the socializing and therefore I didn't get as much experience. Making excuses, not giving yourself full accountability. These kind of reasons that don't logically make sense for why you tell yourself that narrative. No, I'm not a naturally awkward person. I just haven't trained the skill yet. Or, no, I'm not a naturally awkward person. I'm just believing that and it's holding me back from becoming more socially adept, per se. These narratives that you tell yourself, another really good example of these kind of narratives you tell yourself is addiction. Think about it. Once an addict, always an addict. This is reinforcing to yourself that you're always going to suffer and you're always going to crave and that you've got to be on the lookout for triggers for the rest of your life. When in fact, no, if you change the narrative to, I really enjoy being clean from vaping or I really enjoy being clean from alcohol or porn or gambling or whatever the fuck it is for you. If you reinforce this narrative through like actual facts and actual logic, say for example, you go on a seven day streak, use the logic of you feeling really good on that, fucking streaks. I hate streaks, but I'm just making an example. If you use the logic of that seven day streak and say, I felt fucking amazing. I didn't miss it at all. And you tell yourself, you reinforce the fact that you don't miss it. You don't miss the habit, the vice. Then you're more likely going to enjoy the process of becoming clean. You're more likely going to feel the benefits. And this just, it's incredible how this works, right? Do you want to know how hypnotists work? Hypnotists work through telling someone something that is true, like that they say is true. So hypnotists will say, 
I'll make an example, right? Here. Hypnotists will say that you're stuck and you can't move, right? You can't move in the floor. If you're the kind of person that believes in hypnotists and understands what he's saying, then you're not going to move because as you you consciously try and move your leg muscles in this direction, the other mu muscles will move in the other direction and it forces you to not be able to move. Say, for example, the hypnotist said it to someone that didn't speak English and said, you can't move. They would be able to move still. And that's because they don't understand it. There is no magical thing that they have thrown through the air and making you stop moving. It is just the power of belief. If someone doesn't understand English, then they won't believe what that person just said and they won't be able to subconsciously change the way they act because they believe it, because they don't believe it. If you see what I'm saying. Every single belief you have and every single identity you have about yourself will ultimately form the way you act on a fundamental level. And this is what has changed my life. Completely. I'm switching these narratives. And I want you to do it as well, man. If you want to learn more from me, check out free coaching call down below. Just book it, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. Be quick. We'll learn about you. We'll get learn context. And I'll try and help you as best as I can, bro. All right. Peace out.